we're talking in this uh, on this topic about matrix perturbations. So what is that talking about? Well, what can happen is if you have a matrix and you do an operation on a matrix, a small change in the matrix can have a big effect on the on the function of that matrix. So we have, for example, this matrix here. And notice that both of these columns are very close to each other. So this matrix is almost singular. And the difference between these two columns is in this element, it's 1 over 10. Whereas this is very similar also, and but instead of being 1 over 10, it's 1 over 100. If I take the inverse of this matrix, this is what I get. If I take the inverse of this matrix, this is what I get. So notice that uh, everything is scaled by a power of 10 over here versus, uh, versus these two matrices, even though the difference between these matrices is small. So again, a small change can produce a big effect in, the, in a function of a matrix. So especially for nonlinear things. So, so the, the concept of a perturbation is we have matrices that are slightly different from one another. So a, a matrix that changes. So we use this concept to evaluate the, the notion of, of uncertainty. If we have a system that's uncertain, for example, um, suppose, for example, our system has a mass on it and you don't know exactly what that mass is. Um, if if we change the mass a little bit, how is that going to affect other things? Okay, so that's the concept we're looking at. So if you think, for example, of uh, uh, of a Segway, a Segway, you know, you you drive one of those little things around. They're really kind of kind of nerdy, but they're fun. Um, if you uh, w when they designed that thing, they didn't know what size person or what weight the person was going to be that was going to get on that thing. So you can have a small person get on there a really big person get on there and it and it still works so so it's uh it's able to handle that change in in that parameter of mass okay so so matrix perturbations a small change in a matrix can have a profound effect on the function of that matrix and so there are two specific problems we're going to look at the first is additive perturbation suppose the matrix has full column rank what is the smallest perturbation such that when i add that perturbation to my matrix the, the matrix is no longer full rank. Okay, we can lose rank by adding. Or suppose now, so that's the first problem. That's an additive type of perturbation. We can have a multiplicative type of perturbation. So here, A is multiplying by our, our uncertainty, our, our perturbation matrix. And so what is the smallest delta so that this uh, determinant is equal to zero? Okay, so it turns out this quantity is important for us because later on we're going to be looking at stability of systems, and this kind of quantity is going to is going to have an impact on whether our system is robustly stable or not. So, so what is this saying? Well, we know that if delta is zero, the determinant, then we're just taking the determinant of i, right? So, um, if delta is not zero, how large can delta be before this determinant becomes zero? So that's the question that's going on here. So in each of these cases, we're looking at what is the what is the small, or rather, in this case, it's what is the smallest perturbation so that this matrix is no longer full rank. Or another way of saying it is, what is the what is the um, coming up from zero? What is the largest delta so that when I add uh, the largest delta coming up from zero that when I add these two together I get I lose rank so here this is what is the largest coming up from zero delta so that when I when I multiply this out I get zero I get a zero determinant so th those are the kind of you can look at it two ways one in terms of smallest or another way is in terms of largest all right so the the text basically has this theorem suppose a is a complex matrix with full rank then the minimum, if we minimize over all deltas, complex matrices, if we minimize the two norm, okay, so that's what this, this statement is saying. We minimize the two norm of the delta such that, that's what this is saying, such that A plus delta has rank less than N. So remember, it has full column rank, which means it has rank N. Okay, and so now this quantity a plus delta has rank less than n we can go through and show that this minimization is actually we actually can get a direct expression for it and it is the smallest non-zero singular value of a 
Okay, it is the small. Actually, it's the smallest singular value of a. Okay, so that's what that's what this property says. It's the smallest singular value, and the, and so um, in the proofs, which are in a sec, se, separate video, uh, we actually go through and find a specific delta that that makes this equal to each other that that provides the minimum and that delta you can go through and show uh, is basically related to singular vectors of a and in fact the singular vector is associated with the smallest singular value and we uh, basically from the right and the left singular vectors we form a dyad that gives us that gives us this delta that causes this okay so this is the additive perturbation theorem and so in terms of our questions about matrix perturbations uh, we looked at the question of additive perturbations and so we have a result for that what about this one now so that's the question so this brings us to the next thing which is called the small gain theorem we're going to see later why what why that name is appropriate but this is again the two norm we're trying to find the smallest two norm such that the determinant of i minus a delta determinant that determinant is zero so we're trying to find the smallest delta that makes this happen and it turns out we can show it's equal to one over the largest singular value of a so one over the norm of a you can go through and show that so again in the proof we actually go through and form a delta that does this the delta that does that again is going to be a uh, is going to be a dyad and that dyad um, is associated with the largest singular value and then the vectors for that dyad are going to be uh, uh, singular value decomposition uh, singular vectors we can also show that the matrix this so an, another way of looking at this is this matrix i minus a delta is non-singular that is as non-zero determinant whenever this relationship holds okay or this relationship holds okay so if the product of the two norms of the two matrices is less than one then this matrix will be non-singular so this is some information about perturbations we're going to come back in the next topic and look at this in a little more detail and look at something called the structured singular value which is related to other singular values but it's obviously it's different um, so um, and it it is an important thing in terms of analyzing a system for its robustness so but this is now uh, a little bit about matrix perturbations